G'day, and welcome back to Down the Shed with Byron. Today, we're having a crack at replacing the rear wheel bearings on our Mazda CX-7. Tools for the job, a couple of hammers, um, chisel, maybe a little punch, a torque wrench to do up to about 270 Newton meters, breaker bar, a pry bar, a couple of basic sockets, ratchets. Now the ratchet sort of breaker bar I've got there, very handy, and I'll show you that. Phillips head screwdriver, uh, impact screwdriver if you've got one, but don't stress on that one. Uh, but very important for this job is a T55 Torx bit, 100 mil long, and a 32 mil socket to undo the drive shaft. Then your basics of a bit of Loctite, never seize, brake clean and a bit of lube, um, your wheel bearings, and a couple of cable ties. Crack the wheel nuts while it's on the ground, and if you can, try and have it chopped. Jack the car up under the cross beam or on the diff assembly. Place a couple of jack stands next to the sway bar links, and then give it a bit of a rock to make sure it's steady. Our first job to do is to lube up and try and get that little tab out of the um, axle just out of the way and then we'll undo this nut. With a bit of lube, just spray it around the nut just to hopefully try and get it to um, penetrate. Then I'm going to use the little podgy bar in here and try and tap that section out. With the handbrake applied in park, hopefully we can undo it with the breaker bar. Oh. Oh. Now that's tight. So uh, <laughs> just be cautious or hopefully you've got a decent rattle gun that might be able to undo this. With that nut out of the way, bit more of a spray with some lube in there. You can use the copper hammer on the end of the shaft here, which is, there's no threads up here. So you can get away with hitting that with the normal hammer if you need to. We'll try with the copper hammer first because it's best practice. That's definitely not budging. This one's making it a little bit more trickier. So uh, I've just pulled out a punch. Wow, that's tight. So that ended up being a bit of a pain actually. So I'm glad it happened to me to show you. You may have to add another uh, sort of punch so you can give it a decent hit. Now I've got that cracked and in there I've just kept lubing it up with a bit more um, penetration spray in there. The next stage I'll move on to is removing the brakes. Now this is just what I'm going to do. I'm going to undo the lower bolt to rotate the caliper up to pull those pads out. The next thing I'll be doing is just undoing these main bolts that hold the caliper in place, and they're a 17 mil. Sorry, forgot to say that was a 14 mil. Now with the cable tie, I'll just support this up and out of the way and cable tie it back up to this bracket up in here. With the brake caliper out of the way now, 
I'm just going to remove the ABS sensor in here for the just in case. Um, it's a 10 mil socket to undo that. And then we'll just place that out of the way just in case something happens and we don't want to damage anything. Just inspect the end, give that a clean. It may have a little bit of metal or um, rocks on there or something. Just hang it out of the way. Moving on to the brake rotor. Sometimes yours will have these Phillips head screws here. We'll undo those now. Now sometimes they're not done up to save the world. So that one's loose. But sometimes people do them up to save the world. So you put your impact screwdriver in there, in the undo position, and then hold the screwdriver in the undo position and smash the end with the hammer. And normally that impact will crack the threads in there and you're able to undo it. If you don't have one of these and you have a sacrificial screwdriver you don't mind hitting with the hammer, you can do the same thing. So hold it in there, hold the screwdriver in the undo position, so trying to unscrew it anti-clockwise, and then, let's get the hammer right, hit the end of the screwdriver with the hammer as you're, you're applying pressure. And most of the time, that'll undo it as well. With those removed and the handbrake off, we'll be able to should be able to slide that off. If you do have any dramas, this little grommet here, you can pop that out and adjust your handbrake to back it off. The reason we've taken that off is because this is the part we're replacing. And just in there, if you can see that greenish sort of tinge on that bolt there, that's one of the bolts we've got to undo. There's one on the other side, so there's four of those. But to get to those, it's behind here. Well, from under the car, this is a little bit tricky to show you and hold me tongue in the right spot. <laughs> but um, hopefully you can see those Torx bits there. One there, one there. And then there's a couple on top. So one there and one just on the other side. So trying to get the camera in here and video at the same time, let's see how we go. What you can do is just go by feel and hopefully you get it. Hold your tongue in the right spot, get the socket in place. There we go. So you can see how important it is to have that um, 100 mil longer Torx bit socket. Do that with all four and crack them off. Now I can just get my breaker bar onto here to undo them, uh, but it's a slow process of just going one at a time. All right, with that all sorted and undone, uh, let's see how we go pulling it all off. And just like I thought, it's bloody jammed. So, trying to get that off now, we may need to use a puller. Or, what I'm going to try and do is just clean up where I've accidentally uh, given it a little bit of a belt. I'll just go around that with a die grinder and just clean that. So I can get the nut back on. We'll spray some lube in there, pull that shaft back through, and then try and push it back again. Well, with a little bit of persistence, a couple of minutes, <laughs> I got it apart. I'll show you what I've done. So to start off with, I just put the chisel down behind here. Well, that didn't quite work. So I'll try that again. Just picture that's all together. Now it's off. And just behind here, the backing plate for the brakes, I just put the chisel in there as a bit of a um, wedge. And then I used the punch and the hammer to continue driving that shaft back in. Then when I got to a certain spot where um, the chisel wasn't thick enough, I just put a hammer in there and just continued. Now, I wanted to do that so that way, if you're at home and you've got no other tools or if you're on the side of the road, uh, you can utilize what you've got. Don't have to get a puller. Biggest drama I've got now is just gotta clean up the end of this. Um, 
hopefully you can see. I haven't touched the threads. So I'll just use a file, clean those up. But that's pretty much getting the bearing off. And I'm glad it um, failed on me. So you guys can see the dramas you have to go through, just in case. So I'll try and show you why I'm changing them out. See if you can listen, hear, um, hear the noise. So what was happening, on the first start up, when the wife take the car for a drive to work, that was making like a rumbly grinding noise. Then I brought it in the shed, took all the brakes off and rotated the wheels. And I, that, that was what I pinpointed it down to. So, whew, I'm glad I sorted that one out, hopefully. <laughs> With the area all cleaned up now, I've just trial fitted the new bearing into place just to make sure it goes on those splines. So I cleaned all those. I've applied a bit of never seize to that. Got all the bolts back in place and around the back here I've put the Torx bit through with the extension so I can screw that into place as we, you know what I mean, get it into place. Okay, again, I've got all these surfaces nice and clean. I'll just place that over the bolts. Hopefully not too many of them fall back in. With that back in place, just pull those bolts through a bit. Grab the new wheel bearing, slide it over the shaft, and then it's just a matter of guiding it onto the new bolt, onto the bolts. Holding it in place, and screwing at least one of the bolts in. So I've just gone through and tightened up all four bolts, and I've done them in a diagonal pattern. So just picture, you're at the back of the wheel bearing, I tightened, just nipped that one up, went over to this side, nipped that one up, nipped that, and I just kept working in opposite um, sort of direction until that pulled on evenly. So now we're up to that section where there's enough drive shaft through here. Um, so we'll leave that for now. We'll give this a bit of a general clean with some brake clean, then put the rotor back on. With the inside of the rotor cleaned up with some brake clean, this is all clean. Just have a look where, um, your screw holes are. Give that face there a bit of a wipe. And then line them up with your screws. Refit your securing screws. And all that does is hold um, the rotor in place. If you haven't got them, don't stress. So just nip them up. Make sure everything's clean with some brake clean. Now this is a good time to adjust your handbrake if need be. Um, not sure if I've done a video on that, but if you need one, yell out. Now we'll put the caliper assembly back on. So just cut your cable tie, it's holding your caliper in place. Rotate it around, just make sure your brake lines um, hasn't got any kinks or anything in it. Locate your caliper. Now I like to use a little bit of medium strength Loctite on this, which is the blue one. And hopefully, holding my tongue right, I can get this uh, bolted up on camera. Just remember to put that ABS sensor back in, which was just that 10, 10 mil bolt. Sensor back in, make sure it's clean. With that ABS sensor tightened up. Now I'll just move on to lifting this caliper up. And we'll fit the brake pads back into place. Now to put the brake pads back in, it's just a reverse procedure, but I like to put a little bit of lube just on those um, wear surfaces, or rubbing surfaces when the brake pads in. Refit that in place. And if you're not sure on this, I have got a video on um, rear brakes on the Mazda. All right, drop that caliper down. Make sure that piston's in. There we go. 
And then again, I put a little bit of um, medium strength Loctite on the bolt and then tighten that up. With the brakes all back on, I've just put a small um, dab of Loctite inside the nut. Put that onto the drive shaft and tighten that up. Now I'm running off the spec um, for the wheel bearings, which is roughly 270 newton meters, about 274 I think it is from the book. Um, so what I'll do, I'll tighten that up first, back it off, and then I'll tighten it up again just to make sure it's all seated. Can't remember if I already said it, but I've got the handbrake on. So there we go, it's torqued up. Now, if this keeps rotating on you, or um, you haven't got something to give you your hand, just jam the pry bar under there, like that. And then hopefully, you can see what I'm talking about, it'll lock out on that, you'll get the right torque. The next thing we need to do is bash this little bit of the nut in, so it locks onto the drive shaft. on I'll drop it back on the ground shortly and take it for a test drive so um, hopefully it's given you some heads up and the tooling that you need um, involved with this job now this has taken me about two hours to do both sides and I'd advise doing if you're gonna do one wheel bearing do both anyway dirty thumbs up I hope this has helped you if there's anything I've missed throw it in the comments now take it easy see you when I'm looking at you